is up y'all Jesse and Melissa here with Adventure Endeavor and today we are going to be answering your commonly asked questions we have done a video like this in the past but there's a lot more of you now and they're so common that maybe we've learned more and we can provide even more information <music> Hey, Melissa. Yeah? Have you met anyone RVing full-time with kids before? Uh, yeah. Big uh, time. Everywhere, actually, we run into people full-timing with kids. It's incredibly common nowadays, uh, especially with, like, homeschooling options and remote working availability. It's become a huge thing. People love traveling with their families. We've met so many. Our very first friends we met on the road, they were actually a full-time family. Speaking of which, there is an entire group for full-time families, and it's incredibly common to see families traveling across the country with all of their kids in tow. Hey Jesse, how often do you shower? It really depends. So we typically shower, I mean, it really depends on what we're doing. Activity level is the biggest thing. If we are working out, mountain biking, hiking, doing a lot of that stuff, we might shower every day. Although very quick showers might be every day. And with our new travel trailer, we could do about one week of that if we're taking extremely fast showers. But if the activity level is a little lower, we might go every other day, sometimes two days in between. Yeah. It really just varies, and it depends on the style of camping you're doing. If you're at full hookups, you can just shower every day, no big deal. But we boondock, so we are definitely careful with our showering, and we take quick showers. So if you see us and we stink, that's the reason why. Hey, Melissa? Yes, Jesse? What, what is your favorite place? This is a very common question. Okay, so our favorite place that we've ever been to is Acadia National Park in Maine. And the reason for that is because it is a national park that completely took us by surprise. I didn't even know it was there, to be honest with you, because it was on the complete opposite side of the country from what we were familiar with. And it was just incredible. It was beautiful. There was so much to see, so much to do. And we just absolutely loved that national park. Yeah, I would say it's pretty neat. Meow. Meow. Hey babe. Yeah? Is it possible to travel with cats? It is possible to travel with cats. I'm not gonna lie and pretend that I know anything about what that's actually like because I've never owned a cat in my entire life. But we do know a lot of people that do travel with cats. Um, your rig that you select may have a factor in how you travel with your cat. If you have a fifth wheel or something like that, you may want to put your cat in a carrier and put them in your actual vehicle on travel days. If you have a class A or a class C, then they could potentially ride in the motorhome with you. So you're just gonna have to judge based on your own cat's personality because every cat is different, just like every animal, just like every human, and just kind of adjust and see what works for you guys. Do you want to tell these lovely people watching our video how you do laundry? Yes, it would make sense that I answer this question because I take 98% of the laundry and I handle it. Basically, I go to the laundromat. Uh, a lot of times uh, people say that it looks inconvenient and they want a washer in their rig, yada yada. We had one in the toy hauler for a while. It was helpful. To be completely honest, it is super nice going to a laundromat. You bring all your sheets, all your towels, all your laundry, one and done. Typical guy fashion. I just shove them all in the machine and just kick the door closed, throw some detergent in there, let her rip, throw it in the massive dryer, all done at once. And uh, it's quick and it's easy. Lots of times I'll, I'll leave the laundry because I'm sketchy like that and I'll go run errands while it's working too. Yeah, laundry's easy. I, I like laundry mats. Sounds weird, I know. Popular question, how do you get internet while traveling full time on the road? One word cell data. That's actually two words. I'm already botching this one. So cell data, that is the biggest way that we get internet on the road. Starlink is up and coming. We don't currently have that yet because the technology is not really there to be super mobile friendly yet. Not worth it for us to invest in it. But currently we have T-Mobile on our regular cell phones. We also have a little jetpack hotspot with an AT&T data only plan. And we also have a data only plan and a Mophie 
4500 cell phone router. So basically, as long as we can see a cell tower or get a signal from a cell tower with one of those three carriers, that's how we have internet and that's how we are able to connect to the internet for working on the road. That is our primary source of income, so we kind of have to do it. Hey Jesse, do tell me, how long do you plan on traveling full time? This is a question we get quite often and to be completely honest, we do not really have a start or end date. We just keep doing it if we enjoy it. That's the plan. We're going to do it as long as we are still enjoying it. It might change throughout the years, but overall, we're happy, we're having a good time, and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Melissa? What's up? How do you get mail while you're on the road? This is a good question. That is a really common one that we get. Um, currently, we signed up for a post office box type of a service. So we are South Dakota residents now. We just became South Dakota residents in 2021, and we signed up for Dakota Post. Um, there's a couple others out there. Um, Escapees offers a mail service as well as, what's that other one? America's Mailbox. Um, that one's also in South Dakota, I know for a fact. So we actually have a mail service where we have a, an address, it's a physical address with a PMB number and all of our mail gets routed there and then they sort it out and ship it on to us whenever we request it. There's like package handling fees, but they'll accept any size package, any type of mail. They can scan it for us and put it into the computer so we can see it just logging into the portal. It's a super convenient way for us to see our mail pretty much instantly. And then, you know, when we want to actually receive it, when we know an address where we're going to be for a little while, I'll put in a request to have it reshipped to us wherever we are. Another really common option for people is to just use a family member or a friend's address. We did that for our first two years on the road. We just used our parents' address back in California and that worked out for us for quite a while, but we didn't want to burden with them. Did not want to burden them with that anymore. So that's why we got our own mailbox service. So these are just some of the really common questions that we get almost on a daily basis. If you have anything else that you want to know, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Like always, thanks so much for watching guys.